Hi guys and welcome to the Unquendo Guitars Workshop. My name is Daniel and this is another part in the video series where I'm building my Phoenix Rising guitar. In the previous episode I started working on the inlays for this guitar but unfortunately at the end of, this of that video I realized I made a mistake and I had to start over again. So in this episode I hopefully get around to doing the actual inlay. So without further ado let's dive into this episode. In the previous episode I mostly worked on cutting out all the tiny intricate pieces that make up the Phoenix inlay that goes on to these two fretboards. But unfortunately, like I said, at the end of that episode I realized I made a sl slight mistake by making the two inlays slightly too big. So yeah, the only real thing to do was take two steps back and recut all the necessary pieces and clean them up and I did so. Uh, on a live stream, so if you haven't seen that live stream, if you couldn't join, it's already up on the channel so you can re-watch me cutting all the new pieces out and I did it by hand this time. And in the previous episode we were also waiting for some epoxy resin to arrive and I can tell you it has just arrived so it's time to start doing those two inlays into the fretboards but because working with epoxy resin and these coloring pigments and such is going to be the uh, first for me i think it's very good to do a practice run first before potentially ruining these two lovely fretboards so so luckily i still have the oversized inlay pieces and i found this lovely piece of black limba so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to practice uh, this inlay technique first. It's the first time for me using epoxy resin and trying to do a colored outline around an inlay instead of having it fitting very tight. So <laughs> first time for me I have to route the inlay oversized. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick this paper template of the inlay onto this piece of black lint by using some masking tape and some super glue and then I'm going to cut the shapes from this piece of paper and then start routing uh, the inlay and then we'll see from there what the best way forward is. But first let me yeah, put some masking tape onto this black limba and decide what size I'm going to use and position this template. So first I'm going to use some nice and white masking tape. And put it onto this piece of black limba. Let's see which size to use. Mm. This one, like so. Slightly oversized. like so and let's get let's get myself a pencil the one and let's position the template So guys with the black limba masked and I've attached the inlay template with a piece of masking tape so it's, it stays nice and positioned. I can now use some uh, medium CA glue 
to glue the paper template in place. And I'm using a toothpick or a cocktail stick to spread the CA glue. And I can already tell I've used a bit too much. So here we go. And what I always like to do to make sure my template goes down nice and flat is take a dowel and roll on the template. This not only makes sure that the template goes down nice and flat, but it also helps to spread the super glue underneath the piece of paper. And I can also use it to remove some uh, excess glue. And now let this cure for a moment. Now that the glue has fully cured and there's no chance of me uh, accidentally gluing myself to my template, I can use a brand new scalpel and trace the outside of the inlay. And I've made, for those who hasn't, haven't seen my previous episode, I've cut everything that's black out of a sheet of aluminium. So those are going to be aluminium. And I don't know if the camera will focus on this maybe, but you can see there is a slight orange outline uh, around the entire inlay. And that's what I'm going to try and achieve with pouring some epoxy resin uh, around the inlay to get a nice, uh, crisp, hopefully orange outline uh, around the aluminium pieces. And I think by using the metallic pigment, hopefully it gives me a wonderful effect, especially later on, on the black ebony fingerboard. So yeah, first I'm going to trace the picture, trace the inlay with a scalpel to create a template that I can follow with my Dremel router. I'm going to need some extra light, remove the glasses and start tracing the outline of this picture. And I usually don't practice inlays, but in this case, I think it's the best thing to do is to practice. I'm pressing down too hard. So the trick is to get nice flowing lines for the outline.
And with these kinds of shapes, so the pointy shapes, it's very important uh, to always be cutting from the inside corner to the outside pointy edge. And this gives you a nice point both on the inside corner as in the outside uh, corner. So I can put my knife right at the end of the previous cut, trace this line, but don't push too hard. Slightly overshoot the outside end, put my knife right in this corner, trace the curve as fluent as I can. And this will be easier on the ebony because with the black lenba I have some grain structure that keeps grabbing my knife. But by doing it like so you get, in my opinion, the best result, the tightest corners at least. And it doesn't matter that much if you slightly overshoot your edge right here. So here we go, one phoenix cut, time to take out the dremel and start routing the cavity. So here I have my dremel with a precision router base and I've already set the depth to be the same as the aluminum inlay piece. I'm going to lay into this black limba. I have my dremel set up to a power socket that's controllable with a foot switch, so I can turn it off uh, and on with my feet. And of course I've clamped my work piece to the workbench to some extent, using two uh, bench dogs and a little wedge. I can wedge it in and it's secure enough. So now the only thing to do is start routing the, the cavity. Bit more light. Like so, put my glasses aside, and here we go.
So the cavity is routed for the most part and unfortunately I forgot to hit record on the previous clip where I removed the template and the masking tape and used my scraper to very quickly clean up the surface to remove all the fuss around the edges. And now I can clearly see all the edges and where I need to clean up uh, the cavity a bit so all curves are nice and tight. I can already fit some of the aluminum pieces and usually that would be great. I would be very happy with a fit like this on a regular inlay but of course I have to make sure there's a nice and even gap all around the aluminum inlay. So yeah I'm going to use a variety of these very small chisels, carver's knives and of course a scalpel to clean up all the edges. And of course keep checking the progress because you don't want to be removing uh, material from the wrong side of the inlay for example. And usually you can fill that up with a bit of wood glue or wood dust and glue. But in this case we can't. because we're going to fill the gaps and the edges with an exit color so every mistake will stand out uh, how do you call it like a sore thumb but I can use the aluminium as a kind of a guide Yeah, I'm going to be working on this some more and I'll be back uh, with a progress update. Yeah guys, I'm contemplating what the next step should be and how to go about pouring the resin. Because all the aluminium pieces are now in the black limba but they can still move around because I've routed the cavities oversized. And I'm afraid that when I'm going to pour resin uh, straight over the inlay as it is right now, all the aluminium pieces will move around and end up not in the correct space. The other method that was suggested in the comment section in the previous video was to first fill the cavity with resin and then push in the aluminium pieces. But I'm afraid when I'm going to do that, that it will get messy and I will lose track of where the cavity actually ends because I'm fearing a puddle <laughs> of epoxy resin everywhere and then again the aluminium pieces might end up in slightly the wrong position. I've also thought about instead of using casting resin uh, using epoxy glue and I've managed to get slow curing uh, epoxy glue and maybe tint this orange and use this to glue in the aluminium pieces but then again I'm afraid that the uh, epoxy uh, glue might be a bit too thick to fill all the tiny gaps and same as with the pouring resin solution I'm afraid that when I first put too much 
orange glue into the cavity and when I'm going to try and position these aluminium pieces uh, it will get messy and they still end up in the incorrect position. So I'm thinking about maybe using some CA glue on the back of the aluminium pieces. Glue them in place first and make sure I don't accidentally fill up any gaps with CA glue. And then use the slow curing thin uh, casting resin uh, tinted orange and try to fill those gaps that way. And I think that might be the best solution because then I can... After pouring the casting resin, I can still jiggle uh, the fretboard, or in this case the test piece, around a bit to make sure the casting resin gets in all those tiny nooks and gaps I like to fill up with an orange color. So yeah, let me think about this a bit more and I'll be right back with you guys with my final decision and starting the actual pour on this test piece. Here comes the so I decided to go with the CA glue route. I'm going to use some thick, slow curing CA glue to glue these aluminium pieces in place. So I'm going to put the CA glue on a piece of cardboard. And use a cocktail stick to just lay down a few tiny drops. Maybe spread it around a bit, so it won't leak into the tiny gaps. So, tiny amount of CA glue on the inlay and let's see. And I'll just hold it for a couple of seconds. The nice thing about slow curing CA glue is that you have some time to make adjustments. The downside of slow curing CA glue is that it takes a time, it takes a while to cure. So guys, I quickly learned that putting the CA glue on the aluminium pieces and then trying to glue them in doesn't work that well. For some reason it works much better to very carefully put some CA glue on the bottom of the cavity and then press the um, inlay pieces in the same as you would do with doing a regular inlay where you flood the cavity with glue and press in uh, your inlay pieces. But I have to be very carefully not to overdo the amount of CA glue and not to hit the edges too much. and I hold it in place for half a minute. And I'm very glad I decided to do this test piece first because now I know exactly where the uh, how do you call it, points of attention, points of interest are, where I have to take more care. For example, in the, uh, like I said, in the tail feathers and in those very tiny hooks on uh, the head, for example, the head and the torso. 
and in which order to do the routing and gluing up. Oh, and like so, I'm messing up. Don't talk when you work. So I made sure I didn't use too much glue. Now I can put this piece in. Maybe the trickiest piece to do. It moved a little. And then to think that the actual inlays are even smaller. Okay, I'm going to hold this down for a couple of moments more and I'll be back with you guys when the last piece is in. Hi guys, welcome to Experimental Chemistry with Unquendo Guitars. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous because, yeah, like everyone knows by now, this is the first time for me ever working with epoxy resins, pigments and doing a pour like this. So. Yeah, of course I'm a bit nervous, but hey, that's why we're practicing. So let's get it over with. First of all, I'm going to crack open my window just a little bit further to have some fresh air, some ventilation, because we're working with chemicals. But because I'm talking, I can't wear a respirator or protective mask. But I do intend to wear some gloves. So let's get these on first. And this resin should be mixed at a 3 to 1 ratio. So 3 parts resin and 1 part um, hardener. Uh, weight based. Some I've learned that some resins are volume based. But these are luckily weight based. So I've got a... Scale. I stole my wife's scale from the kitchen. I really need to get my own scale if I'm going to work with epoxy some more. And I'm sure if I'm going to mess the, up this scale too much today, I have to go to a store and <laughs> buy her a new scale. So this is the resin. Epoxy casting resin universal slow so i made sure i have a slow curing resin so i have some time to experiment i'm really not sure how much i'm going to need not much at all i think let's see i'm going to do yeah the, a number easily divided by three, so maybe nine, 30 grams. I'm going to do 60, 60 grams. So I need to do 20 grams, yeah, 20 grams of hardener. Let's 
the scale turned off on itself. Now it's at 60. I think I need 18 grams more. Maybe a bit less. 15. And they given me numbers so as an engineer I want to be 100% spot on onto those numbers and I because this is the first time I'm not sure how precise you need to be but yeah so this scale is not suitable to be used for this purpose But I can only think if I've used a bit too much or a bit too little of the hardener, it will mostly affect the curing time, hopefully. So now I'm going to carefully steer this. So guys, I've been steering this for a couple of minutes now and yeah, although I've steered very carefully, it's full of little bubbles, so hopefully this all goes well. Time to add some of this pigment. Oh, and oh my god. All right, there's pigment everywhere, but it looks great. It's a very great color of orange. So I, sh I don't know how much I need. So I'm going to add a pinch first. Oh my god, this is a lovely color. Quickly screw down the cap because it's very moist or humid. At the mo oh, it's not that bad. I thought because of the rain it was very high humidity, but it's not too bad. See if I can. Mi oh wow, guys, guys, guys! I hope this shows up on camera, but it's such a lovely color. I think I need a bit more because I really want the resin to be opaque. I don't want any transparency or at least as little as possible. So pinch more. Let me know in the comment section down below if anyone is experienced with using epoxy and how do you determine the opacity. And maybe by looking at it on my spatula. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Getting there, getting there. So here we go and it's really really thin so I'm happy with that. That means that it will soak into these cavities of the inlay real good. So hopefully I've done a good enough job with the resin and you guys can see what I'm doing but I think you guys can. So the only thing left to do is trying to pour it. Oh, 
and maybe just smearing it. Uh, I think I needed to add much more pigment. I can already tell for the original uh, for the official pour I need to add much more of the pigment to get it real opaque. And mask off a lot of the of the fretboards. Make sure I've masked everything off so the Resin won't seep into all the thread slots and such. So I think the only thing left to do is let the resin set and cure. And then I'll be back with you guys for the final result. Yeah, I cleaned the workbench for now. And while the resin is still curing, I am confident enough to start routing the cavities on the actual two fretboards because I can identify on our practice piece where the areas of the inlay are that I need to take a bit more care when routing and I think by identifying those problem areas and now we're going to route in a harder material I think it's in some areas more difficult to route in the ebony because it's harder and on the other hand this might help me to get it nice and tight even curves yeah by doing this practice piece i'm now confident enough to start routing <laughs> in the actual fretboard so yeah i'm going to do exactly the same as i did for the practice piece let me put this aside for now i'm going to align one of these templates to the 11th and 12th fret and of course the center line of the fretboard stick it to the fretboard using masking tape super glue cut it out and yeah at that stage there's nothing left to uh, use the dremel again and route the cavities but for the slightly smaller um, inlay i know that for the very tight spots and the very small points I'm going to use an even smaller router bit, one I have saved especially <laughs> for these two inlays. So yeah, let me set up the camera in a different angle and start uh, laying out the inlay on these two fretboards. So the first fretboard I'm going to do is the Obsidian Ebony one, because I think this is the most consistent, uh, consistent one when it comes to hardness and uh, material consistency and such. So hopefully the easiest one to route, uh, to give me another practice session before I go to do the real Ebony <laughs> uh, fretboard. So I made sure I've marked where the 12th fret is. I, I recounted everything and made sure this is the 12th fret. On my paper template, I don't know if this will show up on camera, but the 11th and the 12th fret as well as the center line are also um, indicated by a, a little line I printed on, over the template. And next thing I'm going to do is take some masking tape like I did with the uh, practice piece. And I'm going to put some masking tape on the fretboard. And I'm going to try and align the masking tape with the center line to the best of my abilities, like so. And if you have masking tape that's wide enough to cover the entire fretboard, of course you can use that as well. I'm trying to put the second piece seamless up against the previous one. And now the seam between the two, or the gap between the two, or the seam, whatever you like to call it, uh, <laughs> equals the center line of the fretboard. But of course, double check if that's indeed the case. 
and when in doubt draw a line and I have to do this once more one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and this is twelve So I'm making some marks, of course, where the 11th and the 12th fret are. 24. Yeah. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Yeah. I'm always a bit scared of <laughs> doing the inlay at the wrong fret. And I wouldn't be the first or the last to do so. So counting doesn't cost a thing. So. I'd rather count it three times, four times, so I'm absolutely sure I'm at the correct fret with my inlay. Now comes the tricky part, and that's making sure it's properly aligned with everything. Needs to slide over. Come on. Yeah, here we are. Sometimes you get lucky with the placement. Mm. Yeah, it's dead center. <laughs> so the template is stuck to the fretboard for a second time now, because the first time I stuck it to the fretboard, I noticed something was off. It, it seemed that there were, was different spacing on either side of the template to the side stripes. And that's maybe a bonus or a downside of having so many reference lines. As soon as something's off, you spot it immediately. And that means you have to be very, very accurate in placing your templates or placing your inlay in this case. But yeah, I think I've managed to now have it in the correct position. So I can take some super glue once again, and I'm already experiencing a bit of a headache. So yeah, make sure I have enough ventilation. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use some super glue on the fretboard. Spread it again with a toothpick and stick the template in place. Put this aside for a moment. And again, using a dowel. Yeah, the Phoenix is stuck to the first template and now wait a couple of seconds and we can start cutting out the shape. Yeah guys, the glue has fully cured and I've put a new blade into my scalpel. I've adjusted the workbench to the correct height and I still love that I can just sit up close to my workbench, have it very high, sit on my stool and just be able to work up close on my work piece without straining my back, without straining my neck. So yeah, nothing left to do but take off the glasses and start cutting uh, the Phoenix from this fretboard.
Yeah, guys, I got a bit excited when I was cutting the uh, template for the inlay and I've already went ahead and selected the pieces of aluminium I want to use on this fretboard. And as you can see, they fit perfectly in the cutout of the template. So next step is, of course, take out the Dremel and start doing the inlay. So I'm going to put these aside in their little jar so I won't lose any and I won't mix them up with the other pieces I have prepared. So I've already set up the Dremel with a one millimeter routed bit and set to the correct depth. So only one thing left to do is to remove the glasses and start routing uh, the outline for this inlay first with the small little router bit. Yeah, my first impression of the Obsidian Ebony, the routing is just perfect. Nice and sharp, clean lines. So, yeah, let me continue. If this were an actual inlay, I would be so happy with this fit. Alright, with all the aluminium pieces fitting rather nice, it's time to remove the masking tape and the paper and see if there's any more cleaning up necessary or if I can now glue these pieces in place. And I might change uh, my methods once again. <laughs> So the cavity for the inlay on the uh, Obsidian Ebony fretboard is done and I'm pretty pleased how it turned out. But now I'm not sure how to continue to be honest. Because I, re I initially had the idea to do this inlay, do the pour, set it aside and then do the inlay for the um, Ebony fretboard. But unfortunately I just realized that the slow setting or slow curing resin really is slow. Uh, apparently it takes six days for the resin to fully harden and only after six days it's ready to be sanded and recutting the um, fret slots. So I'm currently not sure if this is the best way forward because I can't test uh, the end result yet. Um, so yeah I'm not quite sure on how to proceed but I think for now the best way is to put this fretboard aside and 
first do the inlay cavity on the actual ebony fretboard. So the process is exactly the same. I can use some masking tape on the fretboard. Let's see, I can't see the center line. I'm going to guesstimate it. Yeah, that's enough. Protect the sides. And of course, mark where the center is going to be. Make sure I have the correct frets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven and twelve. Very important to mark those. Double check the center line. And position the paper template. Yeah, looks good. Nope, it moved. <laughs> and this is this can be tricky sometimes to position it perfectly. Yeah, seems to be good. And of course, some CA glue. Make sure there's some ventilation because the last time I had a splitting headache from all the fumes in the workshop, unfortunately. So, and after sticking the paper template to the fretboard, I can let the GA glue fully harden and then start cutting the shape from the paper template. Of course, I'm going to use a brand new scalpel blade. Like so, and start cutting out the shapes. Yeah, I have to say there's a clear difference in cutting on the actual ebony fretboard and the uh, obsidian ebony. I can clearly notice the grain uh, from the real ebony when cutting. It's very hard to make nice curved lines as soon as the tiny tip of the blade catches on uh, a grain. So yeah, let me continue cutting. Uh, these shapes from the template and I'll be right back with you guys.
the last cut. Here we are. So I'm done cutting the outline for the inlay. So it's time to take out the Dremel once more and start routing the cavity. But of course I made sure the fretboard doesn't move anymore by putting a clamp on the far end and wedging it in between two bench dogs at this end. And this makes sure that the fretboard doesn't move unexpectedly when routing uh, those fine details. Again, take off the glasses, a bit more light. And we've seen this a couple of times before, so I'm going to do most of this off camera. Uh, but yeah, it's time to start routing the final cavity. So fingers crossed, all goes well. And here we go. Ah, turn it on. Yeah, here we go. cavity has been routed now let's see how those pieces all fit the other way around Yeah, if this was a regular inlay and I could fill the gaps with some um, ebony dust, I would be very happy with this fit and I would be done in just a couple of uh, minutes. But yeah, with the epoxy, it takes a lot longer. So what I might do, and I'm going to experiment with that maybe, is stain CA glue orange, glue the template in place and fill the gaps with the mica pigment dust. I think that might also work instead of using the epoxy glue and having to wait uh, for an entire week for it to cure. Yeah, I'm going to think about it some more and I'll be right back with you guys to finish these two inlays. And it wasn't easy, I have to be honest, but I think I found a solution. Um, for the obsidian ebony fretboard, I don't have a choice. I need to use an epoxy based uh, product either uh, the resin or epoxy glue so what I'm going to do for this fretboard I'm going to mix up a batch of epoxy resin stain it orange and do a pour and put this aside so it can cure for more than a week as long as needed because I intend to use the regular ebony fretboard for this guitar build and like I said in the previous clip, I'm so happy with how the routing turned out and how it looks. If it was any regular inlay, I would just flood it with CA glue, put some ebony dust on it, sand it flat, and I would be done. So that's what I'm going to do for this fretboard. I did some testing. I can stain the CA glue I have orange with the pigments I have. And for dust, I'm going to use the mica 
pigment so I get a nice orange fill if everything goes according to plan and that means that I can just finish this fretboard and finally uh, continue to work on the neck and the rest of this guitar. So let me set up uh, a workspace, cover my workbench in uh, a sheet of MDF so it won't get stained and start first by doing an epoxy pour on the uh, obsidian ebony fretboard and then do a regular fill with stained GA glue and mica pigment on the ebony fretboard. So guys I think I'm ready to start mixing some um, resin and hopefully everything goes well with the scales <laughs> and I'm going to mix up about 40 grams so I'm going to need 30 grams of the regular resin make sure my cup is nice and clean set to zero so 30 grams of the resin And I need to add 10 grams of the hardener. Come on. To pour it in the cup first. Like so. And now I can start mixing it. So let's add some color. a yellowish orange this is almost the same color as the color used on the t-shirts but I need to add a couple of drops of the other orange and a bit of the mica powder Let's mix this up. So let's start pouring the inlay. So guys, here we go with the pour. And I've masked most of the fretboard, especially this side, so the uh, epoxy resin won't run over the sides through the fret slots. I'm carefully trying to work the resin into all the gaps without flooding the fretboard too much.
One thing I've learned from the test piece is that I have to be on the lookout for bubbles. I can see tiny little bubbles uh, forming on the edges. So I have to make sure to pop those. Okay, I think all the gaps are filled and what I'm going to do is get rid of the epoxy, pour some other stuff I think off camera and be on bubble duty of popping bubbles that form and make sure all the gaps stay nicely filled and the epoxy doesn't soak away uh, through the flat slots. I'll be right back. So guys, I'm done hunting bubbles on the epoxy pour and to keep myself from mucking around with it, I put it aside so it can cure uh, on its own with, without me interfering and being tempted to start uh, messing with it again. So that's off to the side. And now it's time to do the final inlay. Like I said, the ebony fretboard and I'm going to use regular Zap CA glue, some coloring pigments and of course the mica dust and treat it as a regular inlay. So I'm going to pull you guys a bit closer and we're going to do the final inlay together. So I've put all the aluminium pieces aside and I'm going to glue them in one by one. And I think I'm going to first use some medium thickness CA glue as a base. I'm going to put a drop here and I'm going to tint it with some orange. Two tiny drops should be enough. So now we made our own orange CA glue. And first I'm going to try this tiny piece right here. I'm going to keep the mica powder at the ready, just in case. With my little spatula. And this small little piece. A bit more light. I might need a small little brush. And very carefully I'm going to add some mica powder. And I think this is going to be a bit finicky. And I can't add the mica powder to the CA glue that's on the side right here. And that's because it hardens straight away as soon as the Mica powder comes into contact with the CA glue because I've tried already, it hardens up straight away. So that's one. 
and I do the other pieces and I have to use a little less or I need to use less glue for the first part of this glue up. So making sure I get CA glue in all the nooks and crannies. All the aluminium pieces are glued into the fretboard and now I have to hurry a bit with some tin CA glue and the mica powder to fill all the gaps before the other um, CA glue has fully set because otherwise there might be gaps underneath the mica powder that's already uh, inside the cavity. So remove my glasses, use a fresh cocktail stick and start pouring some very, very thin CA glue. You guys, I'm recording this on my phone real quick. And that's because I think I've found the technique to use, but I don't have time to pull up the big camera. Uh, but as you can see, I'm using the inlay as a sort of mixing bowl. And the trick is not what we're used to by filling the gaps with dust and just hitting it with super glue. That doesn't work. Um, it, it just got a, a big mess. But when I try to keep the tin CA glue as liquid as possible and adding just tiny bits of mica powder just to add some color to the CA glue, this seems to work and keep flooding. Like you can see, the mica powder dissolves in the tin CA glue. Now I can keep moving it around and keep filling the tiny gaps. And this seems to work much better than filling the gaps with powder first and then hitting it with CA glue. That really got messy real quick. But as you can see, this technique seems to work. So after some cleaning up with a leveling beam, we can now finally take a look at the end result of the Phoenix inlay. And here she is. Yeah guys, I was so anxious and so curious to see the final result of the inlay that I did most of the cleaning up. Uh, off camera <laughs> I was so curious that I started sanding just to take a, a quick peek and before I knew it I had almost completely uh, sanded the uh, 
inlay flush with the fretboard using of course my leveling beam. So I can put these aside. Come on. Because the other fretboards, the Obsidian Ebony fretboard, the epoxy still has to cure for a couple of days. So in this video series from now on I'm going to focus on the fretboard we're going to use on this guitar and that's the real ebony fretboard and yeah I'm curious to know what you guys think. Do you guys think it was worth all the extra effort and time spent on getting that tiny orange outline that accent color around the inlay so yeah let me know you guys thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll sure I'll make sure I put up some pictures on screen right now for you to Check out the end result. Next step for me is to recut the fret slots that <laughs> got filled up with super glue and of course with the inlay itself. It's always a bit of a shame that once you've done your inlay you straight away have to cut into them. And I think the best way for me to cut these fret slots is try and attach the fretboard back to the template and then use my um, hand cutting jig, my fret slot hand cutting jig uh, as a guide to help me cut these fret slots back into the fretboard. I think the easiest way to reattach the fretboard to the fret slotting um, template, the easiest way is I think to insert the template into my um, slotting jig and I've already prepared the, both the template and the fretboard with some masking tape. Now I can insert the template into the jig and I'm going to try and index it in such a way that when I insert my fretboard and I can check for the nut line right here. Indexes on the correct fret slot and I'm going to use my fret slotting saw in a open fret slot to make sure I've positioned everything correctly. And of course I do have a center line drawn in on either side of the fretboard. So I think this should work perfect and I'm using my hand slotting jig instead of my proxon saw just because this gives me more control and I can more easily check what I'm doing uh, along the way. Some super glue. Just a tiny stripe down the center. Centered right here. Centered right here. And now use the saw here we go and with everything set up I can use a fret slotting saw and I have a special fret slotting saw I only use for recutting fret slots through aluminium so I won't ruin uh, a perfectly good fret slotting saw but the aluminium should be soft enough to be cut with a saw like this if you're careful and of course I'm going to first lightly score it to make sure my alignment is perfect and it looks like it and now I'm going to very carefully recut the fret slot three mils deep one slot down one two three four more to go another method of cutting fret slots by hand of recutting them by hand is by using a clamp 
and a piece of wood of which you know it's dead straight. You can align it with your fret slot, or with the line you want your fret slot to be at. Place your saw against that wood of blo wooden block and carefully start cutting your fret slot. So all the fret slots are recut, and the next thing I like to do before putting on the sides and finally finish this fretboard, I like to clean up and run a fret saw, a fret saw through every slot once more, just to make sure they're clean, they're to the correct depth, because this is the last chance for me to do something about the fret slots, because I'm going to add the sides and that is going to close off. Uh, the fret slots themselves. So. While the fret board is still clamped to the bench, I'm going to very quickly clean everything up by just running my fret saw through every fret slot once more. just to make sure they're nice, clean, to the correct depth. That always is a bit of a nightmare for me. I'm always a bit scared that I end up with fret slots that are too shallow, uh, especially for a fretboard like this with some binding, because there's not much you can do to the depth of your fretboard once the binding is in. So here we go, all thread slots nice and clean. I'm going to prepare the workshop for the last step and that's gluing on the sides and the end of this fretboard. So I'm all set up to start working on the final part of the binding for this fretboard. And in the episode where I did the orange binding, one, two, two episodes ago, I think, I also started working on the ebony strips we've cut from the actual fretboards in a very early episode during this build and now it's finally time to glue those final parts of the binding to the side of the fretboard but first i have to see if the mitre joint here at the end uh, has a nice fit so i've clamped the fretboard to a temporary jig and it's just hold in place just ever so slightly so i can use a hammer to tap uh, the fret fretboard back and forth if needed so first I have to make sure that this mitre is positioned correctly and it seems I have to move the fretboard forward ever so slightly and now I can start working on this end piece. I think I'm almost there so I'm going to make some minor, minor adjustments and just take my time to get this absolutely perfect and I'll be back with you guys in just a few moments. And I have my leveling beam right here to hopefully help me adjust the miter. So guys, after spending a lot of time going back and forth between the masking tape and fitting the end piece, I think I'm there. 
it took me some time but I think this mitre joint is fairly acceptable. Now I can stick these pieces into place using some masking tape before I apply some glue and stick these side pieces back to the fretboard. So with the end piece in place I'm first going to stick the side pieces to the fretboard with some masking tape to create a hinge to help me with the actual glue up in just a couple of moments. Oh, a bit too long. And the trick is to get this as tight as possible. Alright, I think we're ready for a glue up, so I'm going to get myself some glue, make sure everything is set up correctly, and I'll be right back. So guys, I've got all kinds of stuff at the ready for the glue up. I've got my glue, of course the fretboard with the sides uh, taped in place. So I think I can start gluing the sides onto this fretboard. Of course I made sure that the orange binding is nice and clean. Oh look at this. I can just perch the fretboard up like this and apply some glue. Come on. Oh. Don't do that. There's one side. Come on. Unfortunately, this is a side you can't see. But I'm going to do exactly the same. Just put down a bead of glue. And same goes here at the end. Make sure there's some glue on the mitre as well. Help, oh, come here. And of course use a brush. This side, this side as well. Oh, I forgot. Don't use too much glue, otherwise all the fret slots will be filled with glue. <laughs> so don't use too much, just enough. Yeah, there's plenty there. And now I can flip everything back in place and with some pressure from the top. Yeah. This is a nice and easy glue up. So this is just the back. And now I can start wrapping some masking tape. First the end piece. So masking tape on this side. Uh, I'm going to pull it very tight. Oh, I was off camera for a moment. Another piece. Uh, 
and pull it nice and tight. Yeah, I'm, to be honest guys, I'm currently in a better mindset than I was a couple of hours ago uh, when I did the epoxy pour and was messing around with the CA glue, especially right after revealing the inlay. I wasn't sure if yeah, everything I did was worth the effort. I really had a, how do you call it, a lapse back or I don't know what to call it when you get back into your old habits and I was having a panic, panic attack that the work I was doing and wasn't good enough, was taking way too much time and I knew ahead that I was most likely not going to make the deadline I set for myself for this episode. I wanted to do within everything within a week. And as soon as I noticed I wouldn't make it, uh, I started to panic. Again, unfortunately. And I I think it might also have something to do with that I uh, forgot to take my medicine. I'm still using medicine to keep myself in check. And I've forgotten to take my medicines and I could instantly, or at least not instantly, but I could notice uh, profoundly that I forgot to take my medicine. So that means I'm not there yet. I'm on the right track of recovery from um, depression and burnout for those new to my channel and don't know the um, full scope of this guitar build. Uh, so yeah. So guys, the fretboard is all clamped up and I've clamped it to a piece of wood I am certain of is dead straight. So this should all go very well and no shenanigans of the fretboard twisting or gluing cupped or bowed for some reason. So this should be going good and I can let this cure overnight. And of course we still have to wait a couple of days for the resin on the other fretboard to fully harden so I can show you the end result of that one in a future episode. But unfortunately this is all I have time for in this episode. I hope you liked it and if you did, as always, let me know by leaving a like, leaving a comment and a suggestion in the comment section down below. This also helps other viewers to find my content and in the long run help me to grow my channel and to be able to make more of these video series for you guys. So yeah, I hope you liked it and I hope of course to see you all in the next episode. But until then, take care and bye bye.